At the Must Farm site, 12 cuts were discovered with a diverse range in shape, fabric and finish. Out of the 128 vessels that were found in total, Pot 41, the poppy-headed cup, is one of the most extraordinary vessels in the Must Farm assemblage, both in terms of form and decoration. Lots of big pots, lots of little pots, nested pots. But actually for me, possibly the most interesting pot out of the whole assemblage is this little chap here. This little what's called the poppy-headed cup. It does look a little bit poppy-headed. Um, it's extremely even in its finish, isn't it? It's just beautifully formed. And little indentations around the top, shapes that sort of correspond with the way you might hold your fingers while working it. And, and, and for me, that's often the case with ancient pots, is you pick them up and you, and you hold them in your hand and you start to sort of consider how they might have been made. And all of a sudden you find that your fingers fit into the form that would, was used by a potter two, three thousand years ago making a pot. Um, this one is so incredibly even, it's slightly puzzling. It has the feel of a pot that's been made rotating because the indentations around here are they are the tips of a finger, just held in place. The grooves that are just above this indentation are possibly a fingernail being impressed in, but they meet up absolutely perfectly on the other side of the pot. And it is suggestive of a pot that has been made on a turntable. I hesitate to say wheel because as far as we're concerned, there are no potter's wheels in operation in Britain at this time. And if this were made on a fully fledged potter's wheel, then why aren't all the other pots in Must Farm made on a potter's wheel? So it does pose lots and lots of questions. But when I'm forming a hand-built pot like this, I do like to work on something that will rotate and allow me to work around it. And often, from a prehistoric point of view, I'll work on a mat or a board that's placed on sand and, and will rotate. The poppy-headed cup is a fantastic example of how the pots at Must Farm have been affected by the fire, showing us a clear line between burnt and unburnt zones. The fire at Must Farm had a big impact on the pottery assemblage from the site. The heat and the intensity of the fire ended up impacting the fabrics of a lot of the vessels and causing blistering and spalling. Spalling is a particular phenomenon that occurs when the pottery becomes really, really heated up and effectively causes parts of that to explode off, leaving these rough craters in the surface of the vessel. And that heat-induced damage is particularly intense around particularly interesting areas of the vessel, such as the rims and the bases. And the extent of the, the damage potentially caused by the fire makes it very difficult for us to understand how they were used by employing things like use wear analysis, where we use microscopes and other techniques to examine that material. But if it's been damaged and disrupted as a result of the fire, that makes our process a lot more tricky. Similarly, the intensity of the damage to a lot of those vessels com complicates the fact that we're not sure if that was from the lifespan of the vessel when it was naturally in use, being cooked with or in the, in the structures themselves, or whether that was directly as a result of the damage that caused the destruction of the settlement. In many of the buildings at Must Farm, we actually found broken up vessels directly inside those structures. So when they were destroyed, they would have fallen down and been in the footprint below. And that's interesting, so it may be that when vessels were broken, those broken sheds ended up being incorporated into the floors or other parts of the structure. But it is also possible that they were actually being deliberately retained by people, potentially to be used as grog. So breaking down courseware parts of vessels and reusing those to make further pots in the future. Or potentially those vessels could have been broken and had yet to be deposited into the middens outside of those structures. So what we have at Must Farm is a collection of pots that are of a really high skill level. They're being made by people who have a real understanding of their materials, of the technology behind the making, their tools, and they're producing a range of pots which are quite exceptional. 